Okay, in this video, we're going to look into building an RC switch, a radio controlled switch. Now, if you're into RC models and you have a boat, a plane, or a drone, and you want to control a device on board your model with an on off function, or if you just want a general purpose remote control switch, you could build one of these. Now, this is a six channel RC receiver, and it's made by Spectrum. I'm using the auxiliary channel which I have mapped to one of the switches on the transmitter. Now when that switch is in the off position, the output of the receiver will be a 1 millisecond pulse every 20 milliseconds. If I put the switch to the on position, the output of the receiver will be a 2 millisecond pulse every 20 milliseconds. Now the output of the receiver is fed into one of the GPIO pins on Arduino Nano and our Nano will measure the pulse width of the receiver and if it sees a one millisecond pulse, it will turn off the LED on pin 13. And if it sees an output pulse of two milliseconds, it will turn on the LED on pin 13. So I'll turn on my transmitter. And right now it's in the off position, so I'll turn it on. You can see the LED comes on. Turn it off and on. So you can see I'm controlling the LED with my, with my RC transmitter. Okay, the RC transmitter that I'm using is a Spectrum DX6i. I have my monitor screen selected. If you look at the very bottom, you can see auxiliary. And the indicator is all the way over to the left because the switch is in the off position. That means a one millisecond pulse. Now, if I put the switch to the on position, you'll watch the indicator go all the way to the right. You see it's all the way over to the right. That means in the on position, it will give out a two millisecond pulse. If I put it back to the off position, it goes back to the left. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the output of the RC receiver and I have the switch of my transmitter in the off position. So what we can see here is a one millisecond pulse that's being fed into the GPIO of the Arduino Nano to be decoded. If I turn the switch on, you can see the pulse width increases to two milliseconds. If I turn it off, it goes back to one, one millisecond. And that's happening every 20 milliseconds. Okay, next we're going to look at how the Arduino Nano can decode the pulses from the RC receiver and tell the difference between a 1 millisecond pulse and a 2 millisecond pulse. So first of all we'll start off with the main oscillator on Arduino Nano and that's 16 megahertz and we feed that into a divide by 64 prescaler so the output will be 250 kilohertz and we feed that into timer 1 which is a 16-bit timer so every clock period of 0 0.004 milliseconds, the counter will increment. So if we start the counter on the leading edge of the pulse, and we stop the counter on the trailing edge of the pulse, and we read the counter value, and if we get 250 clock counts, that will be a 1 millisecond pulse. And we do the same for the, for the 2 millisecond pulse, but we'll get a count value of 500 clock counts. Okay, here's the code running on the Arduino Nano that decodes the pulses coming from the RC receiver. Now I've written this in fourth, so it's interactive, so I can run this code from the keyboard. So the first word we see here is called start clock. Now that starts the clock and configures the prescaler to divide by 64. Now the next word is called clear count, and that clears, that clears the count value that sets it to zero. And there's count question mark, and that reads the count value. Now the main program is called RC, and the first word it sees there is called init. That initializes pin 2 to be an input and pin 13 to be an output, which drives the LED. The next word is start clock, which starts the clock and configures the prescaler to divide by 64. Then it goes into a begin again continuous loop. That's the main program. So the first thing it does, it's looking for the leading edge. So it goes into this begin until loop, looking for the leading edge of the pulse. When it sees the leading edge, it'll do a clear count. So it set the count to zero. Then it will go into another loop looking for the, for the trailing edge while the counter is counting. Now when, when, the, when the trailing edge is detected, it will read the count value and do a comparison. If the count value is greater than 450, pin 13 will go high, so the switch will be on. And if it's lower than 300, pin 13 will go low, so the switch will be off. So this continues on over and over again between the begin and the gain loop. So it's continuously monitoring the output of the receiver, looking for the pulse width to turn on or off the switch. 